Hey guys, I'm Brian, and today I'm going to show you how this little $60 part, if you catch it in time, will only cost you removal of the transmission and $60 pretty much. If you don't catch it and you think you can limp home by revving it and slipping it and getting it home, behold, all of this damage can be yours. Stay tuned. Brian's Mobile One. Do you ever drive in your Ford Explorer or your Ford Mustang and it just won't go? Might I suggest Transgo. Transgo is the answer. They will fix your front pump alignment issues. They will fix your control valve issues because they've got a new updated version. That replaces this in the front pump. Front pump? That doesn't look like a front pump. This is the front pump of the transmission. It's been split apart. This is where the torque converter goes in. You pull this off. It is also known as the Hobbit front door for the 5R55S. When this is in the closed position like this, you have good pressure in your transmission. If it's stuck in the open position, then you're kind of in bypass and you're not going to get very good flow or lubrication on your pump. The flow control valve sends fluid through here and then goes throughout. And what happens with this is it'll fail uh, because it gets a little wear edge. You can hear it clicking right there. It shouldn't be hitting anything. It should be sliding right up. Uh, but it'll get stuck on that and then you don't have any pressure. We've got a new flow control valve. Uh, it doesn't fit in this way, but it fits in this way. The key attribute here is that it's rounded on the top so that it can't get stuck. This comes with the Transgo shift kit. This came with it. Man, editing this in post, this was confusing. This is a used front pump and a used flow control valve. It was all buttoned up, ready to throw in the transmission with a bad flow control valve. Man, these are common. And as, as if it wasn't crazy enough that the other one failed, this one's got a hard spot in it too. See, this just cuts off the fluid there. So that piston blocks it. If you have it pushed down, then it allows fluid to go by. You can see the little port and the fluid spills through there and goes around this way. You've got a pump that pumps the fluid and gives you pressure so that you can do all kinds of hydraulic manipulations, including but not limited to pressurize the clutches. Um, there's all kinds of little ports and things through this. You can see all these little holes. There are certain baskets that have clutches in them and when you pressurize it, it makes them engage. A lot of clutches are spring actuated on say like a manual transmission car and they're locked together and when you press on the clutch the bearing presses on it and lets go. This is different. These are relaxed. These have 50 thousandths of an inch or so 30 thousandths of an inch depending on which one you're talking about and they don't have pressure on them until the hydraulic forces push on a rubber bushing and it presses them together so we have contact and the force moves through it. Speaking of the force, uh, this is literally a flow control valve. That's the name of it. And it's got two little openings. I've got two of them so I can show you this. And then it's split in the middle by this little island right here. And it comes around from the pump. You have this in here. And your torque converter comes in through the other side. This is the front door of the transmission. Torque converter comes in through here and centers up in the pump and drives it because there's a little uh, notch here and here that corresponds with the little notch here and here on your torque converter. Well, that all keys up. Uh, but if this gets stuck open, then it's just like a balloon with a hole in it. You know, the pressure just goes out of it. Or if you have a soda straw and you're drinking through it and you suck in air and through a crack, same thing you don't have enough pressure to cause everything to lock up. So what happens if these are slipping instead of being forced on? Well, they burn up and get real thin and the edges of them kind of fray off. Um, same thing with the bands that are actuated uh, using these little pistons. If they're not all the way locked in, they slip and then you have all of these little micro cracks. And you see the little cracks in it? That burns them up. So you got to replace these. These get cooked. Um, the only thing that survived was the reverse band for the reverse planetary. Long story short, if you get it towed, get this replaced. If it's uh, having a problem, the customer went out to reverse their Mustang and it wouldn't go. And so they push it backwards. It takes a lot more pressure to make reverse. you got to work hard to get reverse in an automatic transmission. And then he was able to get it to go forward. Oh, I'm, I'm in the green. And so driving home, and this could happen to anybody, and that's why the, the value of this video, if you know somebody that has a Ford Explorer or a Mustang, 
or uh, a Ford Ranger or something that has this kind of a transmission, uh, make sure to do that because otherwise you get all kinds of havoc. Um, another thing that failed, you see these uh, kind of gold brassy colored washers. This one's loose and worn out. But a lot of these end, end up in the pan. These are missing completely. Nope, this one has one. Um, this was the one that was missing. And then you got to get a whole new one. This is a planetary. These are little planet gears and then there's a, uh, a ring gear and a sun gear that goes in the middle. Another thing you can do when you rebuild it is drill little holes in it. Anyway, well, I got another video on all that kind of stuff coming up, so stay tuned, be sure to subscribe. Don't miss out. So if you look on the other side of this, uh, because it didn't have lubrication, think about it. If you have no flow, uh, no pressure, um, what happened to your pump, just think about it in your vehicle if you don't have oil circulating, your bed, you don't have oil pressure. Uh, same thing happens here, it wipes all this stuff out, gets hot. Uh, this bushing failed and got all chewed up and then it also chewed up the front pump and on the wear plate on this this also got kind of scored out right here and here where this gear goes and you can see on the gear there's the wear marks on it as well so if you go to drive your car and it's not working properly call a tow truck tow trucks about 200 bucks pulling this out and doing that probably six seven hundred under a thousand dollars as it is with replacing all of this it could easily be three thousand dollars so you do the math Hope this video is helpful. When you think of a transmission not going or slipping, think of it the same way as a car overheating. Because literally if it's slipping, that friction is going to build up and it's going to chew stuff up. Uh, if you overheat a car, you blow your head gasket, you got to pull the cylinder heads off, got to take them to the machine shop, lots of tear down, lots of labor. So don't be afraid to call a tow truck, park it. Uh, a lot of your insurance companies will give you, even if you just have liability, they will give you uh, one free tow a year. So might as well use it. Might not even cost you anything. If you like this video or you know somebody that could benefit from it, be sure to share it with them. Be a friend. Cheers. Bonus footage at the end. On gloves. I don't see them.